Well, essentially what the uh, court in Arizona ruled was actually about three different points. And really it was, it was the suit that was brought against the U.S. EPA. Of course, that's the agency, federal agency responsible for registering pesticides. And there were three points of the suit that the court addressed. And one in particular was that the court felt that the EPA had violated the uh, statute about notification. So anytime that there's a change in a pesticide product, a new product coming into the marketplace, or a significant change in the use pattern of a product, that the EPA open up comments and take public input on that. And the court felt when the products were re-registered in uh, 20, late 2020, that the EPA did not actually um, uphold that requirement to have that public input. And then there was another piece in there that they felt as though you know, the, the agency had ignored or not uh, actually solicited additional data when the new registrations came out. Remember back in 2020, those, those labels were vacated by the court in California. And then you know, the EPA more or less issued the five-year labels at some point later in that calendar year. And the, the Arizona court felt as though uh, that violated several statutes simply because the EPA had considered that not a new registration, but since those labels had been previously vacated, the argument was that the EPA should have considered that a brand new registration as well as seeking additional data from, uh, from stakeholders or shareholders. Now, how does this impact extend to Flux, uh, extend mm -hmm. Max, uh, Ingenia, Tavio? Well, actually, what the court did is they vacated the labels. So very similar to what the California court did several years ago, those products now do not have a federal label, so they cannot be used. So that was the ruling that happened about a day and a half ago, and there's, I suspect there could be an appeal by the registrants, but we don't know that for certain. But as of right now, those products would not be available to be used. So farmers uh, who had planned to use uh, dicamba-tolerant soybeans uh, may be should looking at uh, plan B? It would depend on the variety of the dicamba. If they have the straight dicamba trait without the flex trait, then they certainly would need to look at something other than a dicamba product. If they had the extend flex varieties, then you do have the option to use a glufosinate containing product like an interline or a liberty uh, post-emergence on there. Uh, but for those who don't have that flex trait characteristic, then they would have to find an alternative post product. It seemed like the court order uh, indicated that they were well aware of the impact, a negative impact that this would have. I was surprised at that, but they uh, indicated that it could have a, a significant negative impact on weed control in the Corn Belt. They did, and they acknowledged, you know, that the timing of this is, is obviously not good for folks who have already, you know, made their selection of either soybean varieties and or herbicide options going into 2024. But again, I think the court felt that the overwhelming evidence was against the registrations to begin with, even though the timing of it right now is going to obviously, you know, introduce a lot of challenges to, you know, growers across the U.S. who had planned on using these particular products in 24.